I hope we're live. Um, so yeah, welcome everyone. Another stream, continuing on the same idea that we started um, on Wednesday. Um, so let me tell you quickly about what to expect today. Um, first of all, we're going to be playing PLO, as uh, some of you might know. Uh, Love the Spot recently started offering uh, coaching in the field of PLO. Um, so that's very exciting. That's that's new, and therefore, yes, I'm going to be playing some live PLO today. Mm, looking forward to answering any questions that you guys might have, um, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, going to be a bit of live play. Maybe I'll go on around here and there, and um, you know, go go into some sort of discussion with you. We'll see. I'm just we're gonna go with the flow. Um, we have a bit of a delay on the stream, of course, because we're gonna be playing live, and we want to be fair to anyone in case anybody is watching. We don't want them to know our cards and gain advantage over other people. Um, the idea today is I'm gonna play in a Zoom pool. Um, I'm not sure which stakes. Probably we go one higher than uh, last week. Last week, oh, not sorry, it was actually on Wednesday. On Wednesday we played the 10 cent, 25 cent game in a Zoom pool on Poker Stars. I think today we go 25 cent, 50 cent. Um, the idea there is going to be we're going to play similar strategy um, on Wednesday. Um, the strategy was just basically the very standard, very basic simple approach to the game uh, to see if um, we can spot any player tendencies, anything specific to the stakes. Um, so today I would like to do the same. Um, you know, focus on playing very basic and just see what kind of mistakes people make, uh, how can we exploit it. Mm, again, today I would be playing without the HUD, which of course puts me in a slight disadvantage in the Zoom pool. Um, it's not a big deal in a regular table, but in a Zoom pool, since you can't really track any of the players. Oh, and by the way, let me mention this person is sitting out, or is he back? Because I am actually hoping to jump into this table in case... There's a seat open, so you you guys might even be in for some higher stakes action today. It is unlikely to happen, though. We are like fourth down the list. I don't see anybody of these players leaving anytime soon. And uh, you know, if if, um, if the recreational player, or I don't even know if he's a recreational player, but anyway, if the player that the game is around. Is based around if he leaves, then of course the game breaks, so we're not getting into it. But we'll see how it goes. Um, once we start with the zoom with the lower stakes, I'm not gonna bother uh, with this table and try to jump in since, anyway, it's very unlikely to, that we get in. Mm, anyway, I suppose do let me know if um, the video quality is good. If um, the sound is all right, if you can hear me, and if everything is is uh, you know, if we're all good to go, um, yeah. So coming back to the idea of today, uh, basic strategy: trying to find how people play. We're going to be playing without the HUD, uh, which basically means that every decision we would evaluate as if we have no information about the other players, which we actually don't anyway. Um, yeah, and just assume that everybody is decent, just for the fun of it, you know. Let's not get out there and think, oh, everybody is bad. Let's assume they're good. Let's see what happens. Um, so anyway, do let me know in the chat. I'd like to start playing when I get the confirmation that we're all good um, and you guys can see me and hear me. Um, 
Oh, yeah, today I suppose we're gonna we're gonna be streaming for you know an hour, hour and a half, the usual. Just as long as it's fun. Poker should be fun in the end of the day. Um, and yes, if you do have any questions, please do write in the chat. I'll be happy to answer anything. Um, all right. So yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to answer everything uh, within reason, and uh, you know, hopefully get some discussion started with you guys. By the way, do look me up on Twitter. Um, you know, just if you have, it's just it's a, it's a way to reach me. You know, if if you have any suggestions, any ideas about what you want to see in future streams, um, any feedback on the on this stream, just please go ahead, contact me there. Um, yeah, and also exciting thing is that next week we're holding a uh, group coaching session that is going to be for free. Um, and yeah, anybody can apply the way you apply. Uh, just reach out to me any way you can. Probably easiest on Twitter. Let me know. Say hey, I want I want in, and uh, we'll consider you. There's there's no yeah there's no requirements. You can just you just say why you want it, um, and that's it. Um, All right, we have. Um, I suppose we do have a delay on on uh, on the chat, so I'm gonna wait till it's in the chat before I, I comment on something. I see some uh, some comments popping up there in the chat. Uh, Robbie Expert is here with a. I don't know how to describe it with a. <laughs> well, it's funny anyway. The guy with the face, hey. Uh, Okay, Robbie Expert is saying it's okay. What's the delay? Well, delay is three minutes. Um, I think that should be fair enough for everyone. You know, three minutes. Uh, we can still interact in the chat, and you know, it's very unlikely we are giving away any information to any of the people who could happen to be watching. Um, right. He's in the Zoom two five though. Two. Who? What are you talking? Oh, oh, this this guy, or uh, yeah, 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 he is. I mean, he this this guy is playing playing a lot. You know, I, I don't even know how to describe. I mean, this this a person playing a lot, but the games do tend to form around him. Obviously, not the zoom pool. It usually doesn't form around a player, but um. You know, whenever you see some of the higher stakes games, it's it's usually there's one one player who's who's a bit on the weaker side, or at least so the other people think. It's not necessarily always the case, and um, you know, very rarely you would see a six max game running around nobody in particular. You know, like some ego battles. You could see sometimes people play like three handed, and they keep playing for a while, but that's not purely just a, an ego battle. They're also hoping that somebody else might join, and uh, yeah, that's really understandable. Anyway, so far no movement. Nobody's leaving the stable, so we are unlikely to get in. Um, that's a bit sad, but I guess then we can go ahead with our original plan and playing uh, the low stakes zoom and see what's up. Uh, let's review a couple of hands here, uh, just for fun. Let's see what happened. Um, sorry for that. I had some notification that I uh, got a bit distracted with. So anyway, what happened here? Um, let's see. Just a couple of hands. Um, we have an early position open. Do notice that it's a smaller than a pot size open. Uh, something people started doing, um, especially at the higher stakes uh, recently. Um, we're not going to get into that discussion today. If we play the lower stakes, we're just going to be um, opening for pot any position, and three betting for pot any position. Except for um, small blind, we will have some limping range. So, okay, so under the gun opens, big blind defense, the board comes 
as you can see the way it comes, it checks through. All right, very very fair enough result. Going to happen most of the time. Um, big blind is unlikely to lead in this situation. The the under the gun player um, is going to check back a decent amount of the time. So so far so good. Um, then it's a check. Oh no. Okay, we have a lead. It's a one third pot size bet. Uh, very reasonable. Very very good sizing uh, in this situation. I would expect that he's doing it with uh, the whole range of hands that he decides to do it with. And we have a raise, um, which is slightly unusual, but um, let's see what happens. So, and now it's an eight. Okay, so we have a full house possible at this stage. Unlikely that um, the player in position has one. Although he can, but that's quite unlikely. So we have a check from the big blind, and we have a check from the from the player in position. And in fact, the big blind had a small flush. So very interesting, I suppose. The in position player had some sort of a high club blocker, most likely a mace or a king. Decided to bluff it. Um, on the turn, very reasonable because he would be checking back a lot of those flush throws on the flop. Uh, so his his raise there with the blocker is very reasonable. If indeed he did have a blocker, we don't know for sure, but uh, that's the most likely. That's the most likely case. Um, the call by the big blind is very reasonable. You shouldn't be leading and folding to a single raise there. Um, now, the fact that the player in position didn't follow through with his bluff when uh, the eight paired he is very reasonable. In, in some ways, an eight is still a decent card to continue bluffing with because um, we can expect um, the player in position to still bet his uh, higher flushes for value. But um, you always have to consider, um, you know, the, the, the history between the two players. Maybe they they have some notes on each other, you know, some, some other considerations that we don't know. They can influence the, the play. But the standard way of playing here, I think, giving up in the in the shoes of the in position player, that's that's fair enough, you know. Uh, the big blind is gonna have um, way more full houses than in position player, and for that reason, the big blind can even uh, bluff him off of some higher flushes, although again it's very unlikely that uh, Big Blind has a reasonable uh, check raising range here on the river. So anyway, I think it's an interesting hand. Um, it was fun to see. It's a bit standard, but you know, it's always always good to think about what's happening and what can we learn from it in terms of, you know, what can we learn about the player's tendencies here. Uh, any takeaways, you know, and if you do spot something, you're you're well advised to to always take notes, um, you know, just to help yourself out in a way. You know, the more information you have about your opponents, the better. Uh, always. Mm. Now let's see. Maybe there's another fun hand somewhere. Okay, well, let's check just the biggest part of these. Um, let's see this hand, and then we go playing ourselves. I want to check if anybody left. No, still the same lineup, so we're still unlikely to get in. Um, okay, so this hand, what happened? Okay, small blind open. Very nice. They're both playing a bit over 100 big blinds deep. Mm, the board comes a bit ugly for the out of position player. I suppose he checks. He does check, and yes, we have a small size, uh, small size bet from the big blind. Um, all right, and we have a check call. Now that's a queen. That really doesn't change anything on this board. I do expect to see out of position to check, and in position might probably continue with um, 
with his line. Once he bets the flop, it's likely uh, that he keeps betting. Um, all right, so we have a check and we have a bet and a very good bet as well. A pot size bet here in this situation is very reasonable, pretty standard. You know, after betting small on the flop and you want to continue on the turn, you most likely want to size it up. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, we have a check call and the four pairs of the board. This changes things. Um, the in-position player is supposed to slow down a bit now. Um, Out-of-position player still should just check. It's very unlikely he can develop a leading range here. So we do have a check and we do have a check back. And in fact, we had an over pair here with an open under, very standard in, in the shoes of uh, the shoes of the small blind. Uh, and in fact, yeah, he um, you know played it well on every street. I, I suppose very standard hand. I mean, there's nothing we could learn from it. There's nothing we could um, make a note about, you know. But maybe mm, if there is something to take away for yourself, then please do make a mental note to yourself in this case, all right? So, okay, still no movement. Um, okay. So, Robbie Expert uh, asking, is the title correct or you want me to change it? If you can change it, uh, do change it because we're definitely not talking about party poker, not talking about fast forward, we're talking about PLO and we, by the looks of it, are getting into a live play PLO of 25 cent, 50 cent in the zoom pool. So PLO 50 zoom live play, that's the topic today. That's where we're going. That's what we're going for. Um, yeah, that's going to be the exciting thing. What's the reasonable win rate for PLO? Uh, 200 zoom up. Um, well, reasonable win rate. Any win rate is good, right? As long as you're winning, uh, you're in business. Um, what's a reasonable win rate? Well, what's achievable win rate and what's a reasonable win rate? Probably different things. Uh, if somebody is winning uh, three big blinds per hundred, um, it's very good in my opinion. If they're winning more, and uh, there there are people who are winning more, uh, I am one of those people. <laughs> so, um, you know, then then it's great. That that's a great win rate. Um, but that being said, Zoom and Poker Stars in general is not the place where you can achieve your highest win rate. Poker Stars Zoom is a convenient way to play, and I do play a lot of Zoom. I like it. It's fast-paced. Sometimes I don't have a lot of time during the day to to put in a long session. So you know, sometimes just finding those 45 minutes uh, to an hour when I can just jump in, uh, if necessary, sit out really, really quickly. That's really convenient. That's that's great. Sometimes the Zoom pool is indeed great, even in the two five. Sometimes the 510 zoom is great, and then, of course, it's very nice to play it. Most of the time, you're better off playing standard tables, uh, either on PokerStars or anywhere else. I don't want to really promote a specific site. Uh, it's up to you to decide where you want to play, where you can find better games. But, um, yeah, if you're really trying to maximize your win rate, probably going for zoom on PokerStars is not the way to go. That being said, if you're constrained with the time or just looking for convenience, you know, that's a good enough way to make a living. Mm, and, you know, these Zoom pools run nonstop, pretty much 24-7. Sometimes the 2-5 Zoom and PLO is not running on some specific times of the days, on like the weekends, in the mornings, for example. Well, that's 
that's too bad, but most of the time it's there. Uh, so there's a reason play people are playing it. Of course, everybody in the end is uh, is trying to make some money. So if it's running all the time, uh, means there's a good reason to play it. Anyway, let's see this hand play out just for fun, and then we jump into finally what we were supposed to do in the first place, which is play some live poker ourselves. It's interesting that this player should lead here. As a small blind, yes, he does have some kings, he does have some jacks, considering that they started 100 big blinds deep, so he does have some sets here. Does he want to lead with the set? Maybe. Um, you know, if we do see him do that, that would be a great time to take a note. Um, there are a few draws out there, and the way it's played, I mean, considering how little money uh, the player in position had left behind, it's very unlikely at that stage that out of position player was still bluffing the river. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just one of those very standard hands where. Um, the player out of position decided for whatever reason, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. Uh, so anyway, for whatever reason, he decided to lead with his um, yeah w with his set, and the player in position just must have had some sort of um, some sort of uh, monster draw, right? Okay, so anyway, what do we have in the chat? We have, uh, yeah, still the title thing. I hope we are going to change it. This is not party poker. That's correct. This is not party poker. We're not going to play party poker. Um, all right. Anyway, let's switch pace. And let us go into this beast. Let's play some poker. Alright. So let's go ahead. I mean, for those of you who just tuned in, what's the plan here? Um, we're going to play a very basic strategy. We're not going to get too creative. We're going to play very solid, very, very simple approach. We're going to try to look for tendencies of the players. We're going to try to find mistakes. We're going to try to exploit them. And we are playing without the HUD. So we are at you know, some disadvantage compared to the field. It's, I would not advise anyone to play without the HUD in the Zoom field because it's just very unlikely you will be able to follow the game well enough to be able to get any reads on the players um, without some help. All right, so well, we're going to fold this. Things we're going to look out for. We're going to always keep track of the stack sizes that people are sitting with uh, at the table. Um, yeah, so that's going to be our first go-to. Always check the stack sizes because does that does influence uh, our range and what we can profitably play and what we can't. So let's call it's slightly loose considering he's not even hundred big blinds deep. But you know, I said we're gonna play basic strategy, but doesn't mean we have to play very very tight. We can be you know a bit creative in the beginning, especially in terms of preflop. That's probably not optimal if we would be setting up just to try to maximize our profit here, but for me one of the goals is to try to see the tendencies of the players, try to understand um, what common mistakes they have. Mm. I wonder why the... Yeah, the, the title is still not changed, right? Mm. So, okay, we were facing a situation here. Not a great hand to be facing multi-way um, 
with. But let's let's do it. Let's uh, burn some money and uh, see a flop and just chuck fold. That's uh, fun to do sometimes. Um, guys, I don't know what's happening with the title. It's still... Uh, it's still um, not correct. If anybody can change it, please do. Uh, for those of you with the authority, so to say. Right? Um, so what do we have here? Famous German scientist. Loved the first stream. Glad to see you at it again. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That's really nice of you. Um, in fact, the, the feedback from the previous stream was, was really nice. Some people reached out to me. I really appreciate it. You know who you are, guys. Um, it's quite encouraging. And I did have some discussions with some of you after asking about specific hands, uh, asking specific questions about why did I do what where. And I think it's great. You know, if you guys can reach out to me and you can on Twitter, for example, Please do. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm game. I'm uh, I'm gonna discuss hands with you. I'm gonna share my opinions. Um, that's why I'm here. So we do see a lead. Very weird in a way. That's not the type of board I would ex expect people to lead off. And we're just gonna peel one um, without a plan at this stage. Because if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not even really thinking right now. I'm just talking but seriously though it's really weird that he should lead here uh, we do have three diamonds which makes it less likely that he actually has a draw himself um, the reason we call is that we do have the second not flush draw uh, sometimes the queens are good and sometimes with a jack or, or or a king we pick up additional equity we still can uh, call the turn um, so if it would be one of those cases when he decides to lead for a weird reason on the flop and give up on the turn, then uh, we're doing great. Okay, so we have a limp, earliest position. That's something we don't see at higher stakes. That's something that is probably not optimal. Um, we're going to try to raise. Limping behind is a thing, but, you know, maybe not in, in our position if we would be on the button. That makes sense. Uh, not here, though. So now we have two pair, no potential on the turn. There's two ways to go about it. We can play very safe and check back, or we can try to bet small like we do. It backfires if somebody raises. That would really be painful. Um, but, you know, I want to see how people, how people play. Uh, my assumption is that they would not raise enough to make our, our small bet um, unprofitable. Now the club comes, he still checks, and another club comes, he still checks. There's no reason to turn our decent two pair into a bluff now. We're winning some of the time. We're not getting any worse hands to call, so check is on the menu here. In fact, he, he didn't see but his two pair on the flap, which... I don't think it's a great play in his shoes. It's not bad. Of course, he has diamonds uh, for the turn, and, um, you know, but he's going to make more money by betting there than checking. But fair enough. Probably he made the maximum in this situation, so... Zero human zero zero seven, right? That's uh, that's fun. I suppose a reference to the zero human zero player who's uh, a high stakes rug. So our general idea here, we're gonna defend very wide against a small blind open. Mm, definitely defending this hand. Not the best flop for us. Uh, not much we can do. We're gonna chuck behind. I uh, we do have some turn potential and 
you know, we have king and a queen that might be might be good if we catch them. So let's just play it safe. Not gonna not gonna bluff now. Um, well, seven. We we're still. Should we bluff? At this stage, I think not. I think not. If we would have a straight by now, we would be bluffing at some point before with a with a draw. We didn't, so this player is supposed to look us up quite light. In fact, he he probably could go for a check raise there uh, in that spot. And I, I think that's what he was doing. If he's just giving up with his uh, jack blockers, um, I think that's too weak. Um, Let's give him the benefit of a doubt. I think he was going for check race, so checking behind worked out great. Um, okay, we're going to be not doing something that we shouldn't. Mm, I don't even know how many hands we played so far. I don't think we won any, so that's fun. That's zoom for you. Do we want to defend this hand three-way? To be perfectly honest, we don't. For the fun of it, let's fold and watch. And now we can safely play a new hand, not waste our time on this. Uh, and even the fold and watch in itself was a waste of time. Um, which you shouldn't do most of the time, because you know if you ever are interested in checking the hand back, there's always the replayer. If you're playing... Only a limited amount of the time. Stay professional. Just focus on the game. No distractions. And do analyze your session after. That is important. That's one way to improve. That's probably the best way to improve. Just keep analyzing your play after you're done with the session. So step back and, and look at what you've done. Um, Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry for that. I was was a bit distracted with. Well, let's let's check call here, and uh, as you can see, get the straight. Now at this stage, I want to lead. I want to lead for a reason that even though we do not have a super strong hand. Um, as in, he can have a lot of stronger hands, but I do expect him to check behind with the draw. So I want to maximize my uh, my profit there. Um, yeah, guys, if you're logged, so if you're logged in on um, on the account, you can change the title. Well, I'm not logged in in the account. I can do it. Well, in fact, let me do it. I want to change that. Um, that title that we have, it's not representing what we're doing here at all, so... Hmm. Hmm. Tempting. Really tempting. But let's, let's do this. And, in fact, I would like to sit out, but, okay, I'm gonna... Sorry for being a bit all over the place right now. I'm gonna try... To change the title for for the video here to represent um, what we're actually doing, which is playing live PLO 50 Zoom. Um, okay. <sighs> this is really not great. Sorry for that, guys. I don't know what's happening here, okay? So, the dashboard. As you can probably sense, I'm new to this whole Twitch thing. Couldn't find that dashboard for the life of me. Well, good thing. I'm making money playing poker, not doing Twitch, so you guys have nothing to worry about. I'm fine. We will... Oh, dashboard! Nice! Feels like a win. 
Let's just see if we could change the stream. Um, okay, so, okay, let's focus on the hand. Enough of the technical stuff. So the, the hand, we can check raise, uh, we can call, we're gonna call, and we're gonna check, and we're gonna call again. We're not afraid of spades, we're not afraid of anything really, and do we wanna bet for value here is the question. And the answer is no, because we do want to still check call in case he shows up with some stupid bluff. He has in fact a great hand, so well done sir. So either way, you know, I, I wasn't planning to fold that hand if I would bet or if I would check call the result is the same except you have to consider that when we bet he's unlikely to have a hand he can call with considering he checked behind on the turn but when we check he is likely to have some hands that actually are gonna bluff right now so interesting let's do something like this it would be nice to, to know um, you know the frequencies of this player how how wide is his range and at this point HUD would serve us really well because if he's really tight then we are just burning money by making this loose-ish 3-bet but um, you know let's see we have no reads on anyone um, title oh guys I found where to change the title that's great um, Okay. All right, so what happened here? Okay, we flopped decent, not amazing. We have spades to go with, so probably checking back is the best uh, idea we had all day. And what happens now is we want to bet big um, and we want to consider how much money is going to be left behind. Uh, and considering how many draws there are, let's just bet the biggest. Let's go for maximum. Uh, okay, that's funny. Um, that's a good play by him. He can have a lot of bluffs here. Uh, definitely can have a lot of bluffs here. Um, does he have enough bluffs? Probably not. Um, because for him to have enough bluffs here, he would need to be a very creative player. Uh, let's give him, not give him this benefit of a doubt, let's assume he's not. Reason being, he called our bet on the turn, uh, well, that was a pot size bet. Uh, it's pretty hard to call pot size bet if you don't have diamonds here. So for him to have enough bluffs, he would need to turn some ASAX some two pair kind of hands into a bluff, and of course all the draws that missed. Uh, the thing is, 8-7 got there, so that straight came. Uh, he's definitely not betting that, but Queen-10 queen missed. But we are basically looking at Queen-10, 10-8. Uh, most of them can't even call against our pot size bet, unless this guy is uh, feeling very lucky today. Um, so yeah, I, I like our fold there. I like his bet though, whatever he had, uh, the bet was in order there once the diamond rolls on the on the river, so well done sir, um, nicely played there. So I'm gonna try to get back to the Twitch stream because I, I don't see the chat anymore and I assume I missed some questions, hopefully. All right, so what do we want to do here? We have two shorter players, right? That's the first consideration. We have to have two shorter players at the table. This hand becomes not interesting with the two shorties out there. Um, that's why it's a fold. If we were all 100 big blinds deep or more, um, then, of course, we can open that hand. Um, hmm. 
Interesting. So the I thought I've changed the title for the stream. Seems that I haven't because I didn't click update information. Okay. Go figure. It's not as easy as it seems. It should be good now. Yeah. All right. Uh, how, how happy I am right now. Okay. So let me try to get back to the chat. I've missed something, have I? Do you software to analyze your hands is, is a question. Uh, I do use software to analyze my hands. I do a lot of work with uh, solvers. Uh, I do a lot of work with other software that's available out there. Uh, in my opinion, whatever helps you, use it. Uh, but don't get fooled. It's very easy to to get an illusion of knowledge or illusion of progress by just using tools that do nothing else but waste your time. You know, you might be scratching the surface somewhere, feeling that you're actually learning something useful, but in the end, that knowledge doesn't really help you increase your win rates. So it's just a waste of time. Um, you know, that's why we're here, by the way. That's why Love the Spot is providing the coaching. Um, because in the end of the day, that's the best way to improve if you want to improve quickly. Because, you know, I've, I've been playing for over 10 years. Um, I've been studying poker for all, all the time, all this time. And uh, I still study a lot. Sometimes I, uh, I would spend, you know, on average more time studying than playing. Mostly because I just like it. I love the process. It's so so much fun for me to keep trying to improve, uh, especially when you do see the progress. When uh, you know it, it's just so rewarding. But anyway, so what I'm saying is, you can study um, nonstop for a long, long period of time. It's only useful if you're actually working on something that is important. It's very easy to get you know, uh, busy with stuff that doesn't really help you. Mm. Okay, we'll have to, have to fold here. It's very unlikely he has a hand he can bluff here with. He can have some, but we always need to consider, does he have enough bluffs compared to how many um, value hands he has? And in that situation, I don't think he does. So yeah, coming back to the study question, that's that's what we're doing here in uh, Bluff the Spot. As coaches, our job is to distill the knowledge, to personalize it for for the students, you know. So in the end of the day, for the hour, for the amount of time you spend with us, you make so much more progress compared to if you would be just um, going at it uh, yourself. Let's do something fun. Let's call here. Well, let's do something even more fun. Let's 3-bet. Reason being, both of these players are uh, very, very deep. So this player is in a really, really tough spot uh, when we 3-bet. Um, and, and as you can see, it worked out perfectly because there's no way we had the best equity hand there. Uh, so in fact, we made uh, some money that we shouldn't have if we wouldn't do this play. And again, the only reason we did this play is because we are keeping track of the stack sizes of other people. You know, you don't, you need to be aware of what's going on at the table at all times. So, can you answer to the question that your stream introducing? Um, hmm. Unfortunately, I lost all the chat uh, of the stream that was there before just because I was keeping myself busy with um, uh, keeping myself busy with trying to change the, the name for the stream. So if you can please write that question again or quote it somehow, I would definitely uh, answer it. But um, I don't really know which question you're referring to. 
Okay, so what's happening? He bets. We have two options here, of course. We can we can go for a check raise. We can go for um, a check call. Uh, there's merits to do both. Um, and let's go for a check call. I am not gonna go into detail about every hand I'm playing. If you do want to know why, we can pause and we can uh, discuss. Now, do I wanna do I wanna bet here? I do. I do wanna bet here. I'm gonna have enough bluffs. The thing is, some of the time he's gonna have a stronger hand and we just lose, and he's gonna call with it. Um, but um, he is supposed to call with some of the weaker hands as well. Like, if he's folding some of the very strong one-pair hands, um, you know, we're actually making a lot of money there by, by betting a lot of our draw, missed draws, which we definitely should in that spot. Um, okay. This is a bit too weak. Theoretically, if we assume that the player on the button is not playing aggressively enough pre-flop and not playing good enough post-flop, we can definitely limp that hand. But as I said in the beginning, we're setting out to play a very solid strategy, not putting ourselves into too many difficult situations, just trying to exploit uh, whatever small mistakes or big mistakes, whatever mistakes we see from other people. Now, with our hand uh, against under the gun open, this is one of those moments when I wish I had some sort of idea about the opening range of this player. Because if he's tight, then what I'm doing right now is very bad. If he's on the looser side, this is great. Right? Either way, calling here would, would be totally fine if we just call pre-flop instead of 3-betting. Uh, of course, now we run into trouble because he probably was the tighter player, or anyway, you know, maybe even if he's not a tight player, he was opening under the gun, so... Anyway, our play is on a speculative spectrum, but... Um, and it didn't work out this time. Mm. But yeah, what are you gonna do? So now, if I get a chance, I will raise. If one of the players would have opened, I am not going to call that hand on the small blind there. Um, so, all right, let's see. We finally have aces. I think that's the first time we had the aces, uh, which is fun. Okay, now not the best board for us. Uh, in fact, a pretty bad board for us. Um, several ways to go about it here. We can check and, uh, and call if this player bets, and, and we can bet small uh, and play turns. I, I think we go for a check because, again, we set out to play the basic strategy. Um, I am going to call if we see a bet here. Even with the spot size bet, I'm still calling. There's there's a lot of draws out there. Of course, he's betting his two pair here, uh, pretty much always, and his sets. So we get into a lot of trouble there. But uh, we're sometimes ahead, and we have outs, a queen, a board pair, a three especially. Like I don't expect him to uh, to that he had like uh, six three or something. Now that he checked, we have a decision to make whether we bet for value or not. I think the answer clearly is we have to, considering how many draws missed. Uh, he is supposed to look us up with Jack-10 there. If he doesn't, well then, great. We're just making so much money with our bluffs. Um, because if, in fact, if we did have a missed draw there, we should consider betting it all the time.
So yeah, for those of you who um, just joined recently, um, I do encourage everybody to go on Twitter, reach out to me, uh, or not only on Twitter, whatever way you can reach me. The easiest probably for you guys is on Twitter. Uh, reach out to me. Um, any feedback that you have about the stream is highly appreciated. Any suggestions as to future streams is uh, is great. I will consider any ideas. Um, well, let's play this hand. Well, basically, we're going to play it by folding. Um, so not much to do there. Um, yeah, so reach out on Twitter. There's a fun thing that we're doing. There, there is a, a, a few. There are a few slots available for um, the group coaching session that we're doing next week. Um, purely PLO. It's uh, it's about a 45 to an hour, or 45 minutes to an hour coaching session for a group of people. Um, basically, you guys, the Twitch viewers. Um, or anybody else out there who wants to apply the way you apply is you reach out to us um, in any way you can um, let's say on Twitter and let me know why you went in you know just what's your motivation behind it and you'll be considered it's a totally free session there's uh, you don't need to you know, there's no paperwork or anything it's basically you you tell me why you went in if uh, if we think that you know, you, you get a chance, you get a chance, that's it. You just uh, get to know when the session is being held and you're in. Um, and I'll make sure that that is a good investment of your time. So yeah, once again, in, in order to get in, do reach out to us. You can uh, reach out directly to Bluff the Spot or um, reach me on Twitter. That's, that's the way. So what's going on here? We have a monster draw. Um, this is a four-way pot. Do we want to lead? Um, I don't think so. I don't think we want to lead. Okay, now what do we make of this bat? It's a small bat. At this stage, you know, raising is a consideration. Because if we can manage to get uh, money in three-way somehow, uh, that would be great for us. Just calling is totally fine because we can um, still play turns pretty much perfectly. And now that the ace paired, obviously we are in position to fold uh, and probably saved ourselves some money. Now, what do we make of this bet size? Remember, at first he bet half pot, now he's betting this sizing. Can't really make any reads on, on the sizing. It's quite, quite all right. Not very standard because it's not quite half pot size bet. It's not half, it's not uh, two thirds. So, you know, he just typed in number nine and decided to bet it. So, I don't know, maybe you guys can get a read on that. You know, some people have tells like this. Um, so, what can I tell so far? We haven't seen many multi-way pots. We haven't seen... Well, actually, we haven't seen much action. There is... there We, we faced um, a 4-bet, the only time when we 3-bet. Or one of the only times when we 3-bet. We did squeeze against two players when we were in position by using the fact that they were slightly deep against each other. That worked out, but the rest of the time the game is pretty standard considering that we don't know um, the ranges of other people. We don't, we don't have any idea on their stats. We are a bit in the dark here, so we can't really start adapting our own play and uh, loosening up in some spots or tightening up in some other spots. Unfortunately, that's the case, but we knew that's going to happen. Like I said from the very beginning, we're going to be at a disadvantage um, by playing without the HUD. Now, do we want to call here? Uh, the player from the small blind is 
supposed to have connected with this board very nicely, right? So he can represent a lot of value hands. Um, as you can see, he did have a bluff, which, you know, I don't mind the bluff. What I do mind is his call preflop. He has no business calling this hand preflop on the small blind against our cutoff open. So this is something to note immediately, that this player has a pretty wide and weak range when he's calling on the small blind. That's, that's very bad for him. He's gonna... Um, He's really going to decrease his um, his win rate there. And you know, a mistake like his is a very simple mistake to fix. Let's say if you're working with a coach, uh, a coach would see it immediately. And it's basically a question of just uh, explaining you why it's bad and explaining you what kind of hands you're better off uh, playing. Let's let's make a tiny lead here. Uh, this board is much much better for for our position for the big blind. Um, so we're going to be leading a lot here, and uh, you know it's it's just we do have the best hand for sure. Uh, at least on the previous street, we do want to bet. Considering how many draws are out there, um, they won't necessarily believe us. So now, if we continue, we have to bet huge um, and we do want to continue I don't believe that if we would have checked then the player in position would have bet and uh, so that way we're just missing out on some opportunities to make some money from from hands like ace king jack you know any type of any type of monster draw and of course two pairs so we had to bet here on the turn checking just doesn't work out we give free cards unnecessarily to two players and uh, we get in a lot of trouble on the river. Yeah, uptime around one hour, that's correct. We've been streaming for about an hour at this stage, I think. Another 45 minutes, another 50 minutes, something like that, um, is gonna be the time of the stream. Um, okay, so not gonna three bet here. It's it would be a bit optimistic. Again, we have no information about the range that this player is playing. We don't know if he's tight, if he's loose. Uh, now, what do we make of this? He makes a big bet. Um, on a board where a lot of draws are available. We have the top set, we don't block any of the draws. I think we're best off raising here, uh, because if he does have a strong draw, he's gonna go with it. If he doesn't have it, uh, it's unlikely that he's improving on the turn. Like, it's hard to find a turn that he would uh, improve enough to keep betting himself, since he's not gonna be betting himself. We need to consider would we would we lead on the turn on any turn cards? Probably we wouldn't. So basically, if we don't check raise the flop, we're missing out on the opportunities to make extra money from uh, from the hands that again can call. Because from the other hands, either way, we're not making any money regardless of what we do. We're just giving free cards and uh, you know hurt ourselves in a way of getting into some tough spots on the river when the turn goes check check um okay we're not gonna defend this hand regardless of what happens okay that's gonna be an opportunity to three bet against somebody who's deeper if this player opens that's gonna be a bit on the looser side so i do want to three bet here we have a beautiful hand uh, we oh my god now, what's happening here is it would be great to have information about this player's range. It would be really great. How how wide does he three bet? Does he three bet enough? Ah, oh, I timed out. I thought I still have two seconds. Hmm. 
Oh, I suppose the time bank doesn't go automatically pre-flop. Well, my mistake. I wanted to four bet there, and I was about to get into discussion why I think that might be cool there. Oh well, that's that's a sad moment right there. Well, I have to be a bit more careful with the timing out. Probably best off making a decision and then explaining it as opposed to trying to explain something and then having to click the sit back in button. That's not great. Oh well, anyway. If you guys do have any questions now or any time really is the time to ask. Um, okay, what do we have here? Very weak hand, but we're in position. We're a bit be uh, be a bit deep. We do want to play a lot of hands um, against anyone really. Now we're not gonna we're not gonna start bluffing here. We're just gonna turn the straight and then bet. Right, the club comes, and he leads. This is very interesting. Very interesting, because do we give him credit for being good enough to turn a made hand into a bluff now? If we don't, I know I timed out, but I would have folded anyway. So if we don't give him credit for turning a hand like two pair into a bluff here. Um, we are blocking one of the straight draw cards, that, the, the nine, right? So, does he have enough bluffs there, really? I, I don't think so. See, that's one of these things uh, which is really opponent dependent. Like, if we would be playing higher stakes right now, and that was one of the better regular players, uh, there's very. It's very likely that against most people, I would have called my straight there. But against him specifically with no reads, you know, we just need to give him a lot of credit to make that call. And uh, maybe I'm wrong for not giving him enough credit. Maybe people are very creative here at, um, in Zoom 50. Alright, so... Do we want to bet or do we want to check? Both plays have merit. Um, I think we go for a bet. We are blocking the queen jack, so he's unlikely to have a draw. Uh, more likely that he calls with some sort of king x or 10 9 type of hand, which would really not be nice at this stage. Now, what do we want to do? Do we bluff? I think we bluff. We're blocking. We're blocking the the straight, and uh, the thing is, now that the nine rolled off and the river is gonna be whatever, it's very unlikely we end up showing down the best hand. Like we will have to make a decision of check calling uh, at some stage, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of guesswork against unknown, with without any history, without any reads, without any statistics on him. Uh, it's very tough to make that check call decision. So just bet, bet, bet turn, bet river. Uh, I think uh, plays plays out uh, best. So yeah. So okay, we have a question. Is your main stake 50 PLO? Uh, no, in fact, that's the first time I play 50 PLO. Uh, well, at least this year, or probably in the last many years. No, my main stake is um, I would be playing 2 5 Zoom on Poker Stars here and, uh, you know, the 5 10 10 20 games, uh, mostly focused on 2 5 and 5 10. Uh, that's when I'm playing online. Uh, I do play a lot of live I travel, a lot for live poker, and there I would be playing whatever games are running. Um, you know, I'm, I'm playing most. Let me let me play this hand, and I'm gonna get back to this. So, yeah, we do want to 
continue with the bet if we're facing this ugly uh, thing we do have to fold but I think betting works out best um, for several reasons but let's not get into this discussion so anyway yeah when I'm traveling I'm playing uh, whatever PLO is running uh, in the high stakes areas so that's gonna be the you know the quarter 50 5100 games um, 100 200 something like that so that's when I'm traveling which is a lot of a lot of the time when I'm home I, I do like the consistency of being able to play any time of the day I want to and that's basically when uh, when I get to play the 2-5 zoom and the 5-10 games and the 10-20 games um, all right so Okay, yeah, we have a question from Cartman, if I pronounce it correctly. So yeah, what um, what stakes did you start at? How long you've been playing uh, played for? Well, first of all, I've started over ten years ago now. I don't even know the exact date, but over ten years ago. Um, yeah, I started with with No Limit Hold'em uh, back in the day. Um, quickly, well, I started obviously with the tiny, uh, tiny deposit of whatever it was. I don't, I don't remember something like fifty bucks. Um, so started playing on full tilt. Um, no limit hold'em. Moved up pretty quickly. Within like a year, I moved up to five ten no limit hold'em. Mind you, back in the day, the games were soft. It's not a big achievement to move up. Any thinking player could have moved up really quickly. So yeah, I was a regular um, at 510, no limit hold'em for a few years, um, then discovered PLO for myself and switched. So basically after like three years of purely focusing on no limit hold'em, I started playing both games and then gradually just switched to purely PLO and that's what I've been playing for the last seven years or so. Um, yeah, so that's that's a bit bit of the background story. Um, oh, reset your table, reset time bank. That's that's a good idea, right? <laughs> Let's see if we're gonna do it. That's ah, fine. I mean, I don't care. We're gonna time out some because I'm not gonna try to reset. Well, we'll see. Maybe if if I keep timing out, then it's definitely a good advice. I might do that, but. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it as, as too big of a problem. I should just um, try to make decisions before uh, we time out. The the thing is, we timed out and checked on the flap. I would have checked anyway. That's not a problem. Um, all right. So at this stage, a four comes. It's still a great card to keep betting. Uh, he is supposed to call with, with us with any ace. I don't expect him to have a straight. I don't expect him to have a better hand than ours. Um, so it's all fine. Now we're going to open this hand if it comes to us. Um, all right, let's let's see another question. What do you think about PLO Online? Is there enough people on PLO making it worth going for it rather than no limit hold them um, yeah yeah definitely I think I think so I mean I I can't you know I'm, I'm biased let's put it this way because I I spend most of my time playing PLO I do play other games I play uh, the mixed games I play basically any game that is out there I will play it but I do focus on on PLO um, that's my main game and that's the game that I'm working on uh, basically daily um, so yeah, in my opinion, PLO, the, 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 um, the fields in the PLO are still pretty soft, you know, and that's just the function of the game being so much more complex than Hold'em. And I, and I hear a lot of Hold'em guys complain that, oh, you know, the games are so tough, the games are so tough, and, um, you know, the, not, not as many PLO people complain about the same thing, I can tell you that. Um, let's check here and see if he does something creative. The thing is, we're blocking the ace. It's unlikely that he has an ace himself. You know, we could be hoping that he has like uh, kings with a diamond without obviously having a be the best hand. 
So still a great time to value bet here, and uh, it's not a great time apparently. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> so yeah, what? Where was I? PLO online compared to no limit hold'em. Yeah, I think the fields are still great. Um, you know, the game is so much more complex, and, and consider this, there's so much material out there for um, No Limit Home, so many, so so much material in terms of videos, in terms of charts, and like the starting charts, uh, you know, starting hand charts, etc, etc, a lot of guidance, a lot of information out there, and it's easy to... Um, it's easy to learn from that information because it's not that hard to understand what's going on in Hold'em. It's a much simpler game uh, in many ways, and much simpler in terms of being able to understand it. I know I'm not necessarily saying that it's much simpler to play. It is. Uh, it is a beautiful game in its own right. Now with PLO, it's not enough just to have information out there. And the good thing for, for me and for anyone playing PLO is there's not much good information out there to begin with, right? But even if there was, for somebody who is just getting into it or trying to move up or trying to get to the next level, it's pretty hard to understand what is the crucial thing. What is the thing that would give you the, the biggest improvement in your win rate, right? Um, and for that reason, you know, there's a lot of a lot of um, bad play out there in PLO tables. And uh, if you are serious enough about improving your game, if you're serious enough about um, putting time, uh, investing your time into improving, uh, you're going to be uh, doing quite nice, quite quite good on um, on PLO tables. So I hope that answers your question. It was a bit, you know came from afar, but uh, I do think that it, it is definitely worth uh, getting into PLO. For some people, it might be worth switching from No Limit Hold'em to PLO. I made that switch myself seven years ago, as I, I said earlier, and I uh, never looked back. I still would play Hold'em once in a while. You know, especially on the live trips, I sometimes regret not having my Hold'em game uh, at the level because you do get uh, some of the stops, some very, very high stakes, beautiful No Limit Hold'em lineups. But that doesn't happen too often. Most of the time I'm just really happy that I'm playing PLO and uh, I usually get great tables live and online. Um, so let's go for a little check race here. That didn't work out too well, so now is the time to bet big and take it down. All right. Um, all right, next question. Common leaks at low stakes PLO, bankroll management guidelines. Right, um, common leaks at low stakes PLO. That's why I'm playing it right now. That's why I played, um, what was it? The 10 cent, 25 cent game on Wednesday. Also streaming it live for you guys. So I'm trying to find out what are the common leaks. The thing is, uh, we do have an idea about some leaks um, with with, uh, with the team of coaches here and love love the spot. Um, the um, sorry for for this, but I do want to make something a little something. Let's go for a check race here. I think it works. Works beautifully. We get all the money in, um, good most of the time. Sometimes we're dead, but uh, we're gonna be losing it either way if we're up against aces. Are we up against aces? Let's see. Let's find out. We are awesome, and even a queen. That's pretty, pretty solid. Well done. Nice hand. So, yeah, the common leaks. The thing is, there's so many leaks, right? Because there's so many types of players. Like at the higher stakes, you would um, you would have the good regulars, the solid, the very strong players, um, you know, and they even they have leaks. Everybody has leaks, right? Uh, but their leaks are minor, and they're hard to exploit, and overall their game is just very, very solid. Then you get um, 
some weaker regulars, you know, who perhaps didn't invest as much time working on their game, perhaps uh, they are just good at game selecting, you know, and they're just playing the best game uh, available, that way they still remain profitable, and uh, it's one way to go about it. I mean, it's business if uh, game selection is a huge part of, of the business that is poker. Um, so, yeah, and then you have weaker players, and there's a couple types of weaker players. Uh, you know, there's going to be people who play too loose pre-flop. There's going to be people who play a bit on a bad side post-flop, you know, and, and their leaks can be classified. Now, when we come to lower stakes, you know, uh, the types of players, there's so many different types of players. There's going to be people who are completely crazy, um, um, completely crazy in terms of playing pre-flop, uh, very bad playing post-flop, you know, so the, the variety of leaks is going to be huge. Now, to maximize your win rate, you're best off um, being able to, to recognize individual leaks from individual players, making the notes about them. You know, especially if you're playing outside Zoom, which, by the way, is the best idea if you want to maximize your profit. Playing Zoom is not going to be the most profitable uh, game. It's it's very convenient. It's very nice, but it's it's not where the biggest win rates come from. Um, yeah, so you know, being able to adapt to individual players, being able to to use your HUD correctly, right? Right now we're playing without a HUD and in the Zoom pool, it's a very, very bad idea to begin with, right? It's We're in a big disadvantage here. At the normal table, that wouldn't matter because we see if we follow the play um, enough, then we get to know uh, what's happening. You know, at the higher stakes also, that's not really a problem playing without the HUD because the player pool is much smaller, so you get to know your opponents very quickly. Right now I still just see maybe like a couple faces that pop up every time at the table, but otherwise I'm a bit lost. Um, right, so I, I don't know if I lost my train of thought there somewhere along the way, but... Um, so let's, um, let's bet this for value. Uh, if we get raised, we, we can definitely just fold. We have no uh, business sticking around. Um, now, we do need to check. Uh, the question is, are we calling if we get to see the bet? And I'm inclined to say, yes, we are. We, we're going to be calling. Um, and let's see how that works. And then I'll explain. So, as you can see, I mean, obviously he has the nuts, and, and that's fair enough. But my assumption was that the player is only going to bet the nuts. He is very unlikely to have the jack-9 in that situation, because he... In fact, let me even just pause, uh, sit out and pause. I'll explain that hand. I think it's worth uh, spending a moment on it. So, my assumption was that jack-9 is not so much present in his range, considering the action on the earlier streets now when he calls with an ace out there on the board uh, you know he can have an an ace with something um, and he can he'll still have uh, a lot of different draws a lot of combo draws like the you know six seven five uh, you know something on the lower side um, you know an ace with a with a gutter and Considering that we do block the king, you know, his um, his nuts there on the river are limited, and so basically he ha he does have to have a hand specifically like the one he did, uh, the king queen jack, to make a straight there often enough. But I don't assume he's uh, betting or he's good enough to bet two pair for value there. Right? I don't assume he's betting like. You know, ace four, ace eight, uh, ace queen for value, mm. and since that my that is my assumption, it leaves him with a limited amount of nuts that he can have, and a, and a pretty wide range of bluffs that he can have. For that reason, I think it is a decent call, especially considering we do block the king. Um, yeah, so I, I still like my call. Didn't work out, obviously, but as Hopefully all of you know you shouldn't be 
results oriented in poker you know you're gonna have stretches when you're just losing 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 all the time in fact you know i don't think well we're definitely losing in this session i don't know how much we're probably even losing like close to two buy-ins at this point without to be honest without doing much wrong we did play um two hands a bit on a speculative side that didn't work out and um you know that's ha that's that happens and you just have to accept it and the main thing is whenever you play when you're done analyze your session afterwards analyze your session because the results of the session they, they can be misleading because sometimes you're winning a lot and you feel oh that's that's all great but if you go deeper into why you are winning you might find out that hey you know what there's underlying problems there um because variance is a thing right and we need to discount the variance and and try to zoom in on on our own play whether we're making good decisions where we're making bad decisions and just keep making the good ones um all right so bankroll management guidelines uh, i know it's a broad question it is it is a broad 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 question um the thing is also depends on at what stack sizes you're playing if you're playing shorter stack of course bankroll uh, management um, becomes slightly different but either way, you know, it's whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, of course, there's a lot of theories uh, and there's mathematical, um, you know, um, theorems about w what bankroll you're supposed to have to not to have the risk of ruin, etc., etc. You can look it all up online. It's the same for any any game because it's, you know, you just put in the variance numbers and it spits out the the bankroll considerations now more than that i do think uh, a lot of people undervalue just the pure comfort level like whatever you're comfortable with in my opinion if you're playing way over road it gives you so much freedom it eliminates the stress from the game you know if you don't care that especially considering this is plo you, you're gonna have at some point a day when you pretty much don't do anything wrong really but you lose those 10 or 20 buy-ins you know that's gonna happen uh, now if it hurts you and never mind the bankroll considerations if it, if it hurts you on an on emotional level you know when you finish the day and you feel like oh man you know i lost 20 buy-ins and uh, that's a lot of money for me well is it worth it you know because mathematically even if it doesn't you know uh, mean you need to move down and you're still fine etc etc if you are getting uh, emotionally influenced by that that's just a, a very bad spiral to be in because it's just going to continue you know at some point you have a prolonged stretch of running bad uh, you know let's let's say you're running bad for a week every day you know what's going to happen in that one week you're going to at some point start feeling a lot of stress you're going to at some point burn out you're gonna at some point start tilting a lot and it's just gonna be a vicious cycle you know you keep tilting more you feel worse about your game uh, and eventually you just hate your life is it worth it no it's definitely not i mean you, you're supposed to try to make it as enjoyable experience for yourself as you can if you're playing poker professionally you know because if you you know, playing poker professionally is not the only way to make money. So if it turns to be like a very stressful and painful way to make money for you, is it really worth it? So here you have it, basically, you know, the bankroll considerations. Consider what you're comfortable with. And it's obviously going to change over time. You know, at some point... Um, well, let me think. I, 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 I suppose I don't want to race here we have a very strong draw but um don't really want to raise for some reasons that uh i don't think i have time to explain now but um so what do we make of his bad bet thing um sure he can have the nuts and sure we're gonna pay him off um the question now is after he checks can we really bet for value 
considering that we're gonna be facing a check raise a decent amount of time and what are we really bluffing like what missed here and um, you know if we had a bit more time I would think it through a bit more but you know can we bet for value is always what we need to consider because you know it, it's beyond just the pure um, what is GTO what the solvers say oh we need to bet the second nuts for value here we have to consider what the player is playing what is his range really what does his range really look like because most people are not playing GTO so you not need to always consider that um, okay there is a question about Jane Anders info ain't good enough <laughs> there is much of it there is much of it yeah but uh, you know like I was I was explaining before information itself yeah it's available and it's available for you to use now whether you're gonna use it to your biggest advantage that's that's a different uh, question because you know there's it's the same as saying you know oh, there's so many books in the library so why how come we don't have uh, you know so many scientists or so many crazy uh, successful people out there right because information alone is not enough it's how you use the information now when we talk about videos you know, and to be honest, I haven't watched uh, Jane Anders' videos. I I know there's a lot of them, and I know he's uh, probably doing a good job at, um, you know, putting material out there. Um, but it's videos, right? I, I don't know, like, is there a track record of, you know, people reaching mm, huge heights uh, by just watching his videos and doing nothing else? I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe... Do tell me if, if it's the case, but uh, the thing with videos is, and for example, why I'm not watching them, is let's assume I want to learn something and I have two hours per day to invest in learning something. Now, in these two hours, I can watch, what, two videos, right? Um, what are the chances that I'm going to learn something that's going to really improve my game in those two hours? Well, I would say the chances are really, really small, right? Be it Jane Anders or be it anyone else, really, because if they're putting out material that is just mind-blowing every time, every video, then, uh, you know, I would probably know it by, by now, but I haven't heard that feedback about anyone out there so far, right? So I can spend, you know, for me to basically learn something that is going to really improve my game, I would maybe need to spend... I don't know, 100 hours watching the videos and then realistically I would really improve something along the line of those 100 hours. Now, can I achieve the same level of improvement by doing my own studies in a more focused, in a more personalized way? I'm, I'm, I'd like to think that, yeah. I mean, basically for the amount of time, you know, if I have two hours a day, in those two hours, I can learn so much if I know where to dig, uh, what to do, and uh, what to focus on, right? Watching two hours of video is not going to change my game that much. What it could do, it could create uh, a sort of illusion of knowledge, you know, illusion that you are actually learning something, but are you being able to implement it in your own game? Are you really focusing on the things that are important? Because, you know, for example, you can improve the way you play under the gun. You're, you're improving your under the gun opening range. Well, that's great. You know, how much does that going to contrib contribute to your overall win rate? Compared to, let's say, if you go into analyzing your own database, analyzing your own play, uh, asking, let's say, a coach of, like, okay, can you look at my game? Where are the leaks? What's what's happening? You know, and, and he's going to say, oh, you know what? You're losing a lot of money by playing your um, your big blind incorrectly. You're defending very bad. And uh, overall, that's not very optimal. And it's easy to fix. Let's spend two hours on that and we're going to fix it. Well, that might improve your win rate by, by quite a margin, right? But if you're just focused on... Um, improving your, let's say, under the gun range because that's the video you happen to be watching. Well, sure, it's going to do some good to you, but is it going to do enough good? Probably not. 
anyway, that was a long answer to, to a question, Jane and his info. But anyway, I mean, I, I've never, I, I haven't watched them, but uh, I'm not saying it's not worth watching the videos. It's for sure, for a lot of people, for a lot of you guys out there, it's definitely worth it. Now, if we were deeper here with this guy, I would have called, with him being slightly short, I can't really, and there's another shorty on the big blind. But yeah, but watching videos, of course you can improve, and of course for a lot of you guys out there, you can actually improve your game a lot. Uh, but you can't expect to only watch the videos, do nothing else, and actually achieve something. It's unlikely, you know. Videos help with, um, you know, putting your thoughts together and um, improving your game away from the videos. Anyway, I hope, uh, hope that wasn't too all over the place there. Um, so why is PLO 500 Zoom so low populated or even dead? Well, it's not dead. Definitely not dead. And we have, we have games running all the time. We have the games almost always 24-7, you know, like I said earlier in the stream, um, you know, some obscure times like... Uh, weekends in the morning, we, we might have no game running, but um, apart from that, I mean, it's definitely not dead. The pool, the player pool, once in a while it's really tough, um, but occasionally it's great, you know. But um, again, I'd like to, to stress that if you're trying to win the most money, if you're trying to maximize your win rate, Going for playing Zoom is not the way to go, you know, there's there's better ways. And I'm not gonna try to promote any sites or any anything right now, but, um, you know, don't focus only on Zoom. Zoom is convenient, it's not uh, the best way to make money anyway. It is a good way if you can find a good Zoom pool, um, and if it's the only way you can play, because if you only have, let's say, 45 minute window where you can uh, spend some time playing and you have several of those throughout the day, well, Zoom is the most convenient probably because you can just start out with playing four tables instantly, you can sit out whenever you want, it's all great. But apart from that, um, not, not, not really. Okay, so we're facing a 3-bet from an early position player. I am assuming he's going to be very... Oh man, this is, this is not great now. And we're not going to get into discussion why is this not great. But trust me, this is not great. Like, heads up, I would love to just instantly call when we see this player. It, it, it a bit spoils the party for us. But um, now what are we going to do now? We do expect a bet, most likely from this player and potentially this player could get some money in, right? So that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. Another way we could play is, of course, we can lead, um, but in this case, I'd rather them both put some money in uh, than uh, try to force them out. Uh, that is on the ugly side, I must say, because at this stage, can we believe that we do have the best and unlikely, uh, can we fold? Uh, that would be too weak. We have a gutter, we have a flush draw, we have, uh, you know, a king is good some of the time. So, in fact, against his specific hand, of course, we didn't have equity to call, but um, we're not playing result, resort, uh, resorts. Results! Jesus, what happened? Results oriented. We're not playing results oriented. We're, we're trying to to consider all the hands that he could have in that situation. And he's going to play the same with a lot of draws. I would assume if he doesn't, well, that's something to take a note of. If you only see him show the nuts there every time, then, uh, you know, makes our life easier. We just fold the hand that we had and move on. Um, all right. So, um, we have a very short player here. Okay, so let me get back to questions. Um, 
as soon as I'm done with this hand. Because I am in fact always behind with the questions, huh? So anyway, um, yeah, must be high variance. Yeah, PLO is high variance, but um, I mean, it's higher than Hold'em, that's for sure. But uh, variance is not really an issue, right? Uh, the, the win rate is the issue. If, if your win rate is very, very nice and positive, the variance is just going to set bounds on uh, how much you're winning, right? If, if you are break-even-ish, then the variance becomes painful because sometimes you're losing, sometimes you're winning, and it might influence your your mental state in a way that, you know, if you're not really careful in evaluating after each session why you won, when you, why you lost, it, it's easy to fool yourself into thinking you're a great player when you have a stretch of whatever, 50,000 hands when you just keep winning all the time. You know, you might feel that, oh, I'm, uh, I'm crushing it, where, when in fact, it's variance, and that's the painful variance. You know, the variance that fools you into thinking that you're you're actually better than you are, and fools you into moving up stakes too early. Uh, that that's when it hurts, basically. You know, that's when um, you get into the situation where where the swings start hurting you financially and emotionally, and that's that's not a way. That's not where you want to be. Um, now. Do we want to keep bluffing here? I do. Um, he does have diamonds that he called with on on the on the flop. We can assume safely that he is going to fold a lot of them. Um, one pair of hands he is supposed to fold by that by that stage, and we were pretty much at the bottom of our range. We're definitely better off bluffing with this hand here. As we did um, all right so who is this and where is Arthur well that's me Arthur is uh, wherever he is I think he did a stream today earlier I'm not sure I think he did um, anyway uh, this is this is me and we are we're um, we're doing PLO here so unless you haven't noticed if, in case you haven't noticed it but yeah so basically why am i here uh bluff the spot recently which is actually like less than two weeks or two weeks ago we started um the new project now we're doing plo coaching for all of you guys out there who are interested uh do contact the support for more information uh you know or send your application if you're eager to start right um so yeah we're doing plo coaching right now um and this is very exciting, and that's why I'm here. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm playing PLO right now, and um, you know, answering your questions. Uh, if you have more of those, please do write. Um, by the way, for since we're about to wrap up soon, uh, I'd like to remind for you, for those of you who already heard it, and for those of you who haven't. Um, Please do reach out to me on Twitter or anywhere you can, really, if you have any feedback about the stream, um, if you have any suggestions as to what you would like to see in the future streams. Uh, I'm really open to any ideas. And another exciting thing that we're doing is we're doing a free coaching session for you guys uh, next week. It's going to be a group coaching session, uh, roughly 45 to minutes to one hour. Um, we have still a few slots available, so reach out to us any way you want. Uh, either reach out to the support or contact me on Twitter. That's probably going to be the easiest and the quickest way. Um, yeah, and just tell me why you want to be in, and, and that's it. You know, there's no, no further information we need from you. If you want in, tell us why, and we'll inform you if you get in, and then that's it. We have a completely free coaching session for you guys next week, and it's definitely going to be very useful. Or at least I'd like to think so, you know. Um, all right, so what are we going to do here? Uh, check raising is a thing. Check raising is interesting. The thing is, we're so deep that in general on this board, we're not going to be check raising uh, nearly 
as much as we would if this was slightly shallower. So calling is fine. I do expect that this player will shut down on the turn with the weaker hands if he doesn't have two pair at this stage. So we would be setting us up, uh, ourselves up for a nice bluff on the river once it goes check check. And in fact, this is a great card. Um, five seven now is a straight. We don't even need to bluff with the big sizing. If he's gonna call, he's gonna call either way. Um, so let's see, let's see what happens. I like this bet. Um, he's gonna look us up at fair amount of the time, but I think we do fold out um, a lot of better hands out there, considering that, you know, to be honest, pocket tens are better than our hands. So we definitely make some money by, by making this bluff. Um, if not videos, then what do you recommend as the best way to learn? Um, he said, analyze your game database. Definitely analyze your game, analyze your database, uh, work with a group of people, you know, of course, I mean, the best way, of course, get a coach, you know, get a good coach, um, that is going to improve your game, um, quicker. Now, the thing is get a coach if you want to progress fast if you want to progress with purpose um, get a group of people you know come come together with with some guys who know what they're talking about you know join a group of uh of people that work together on their game all of these things you know videos yeah uh it's informative it's not really the way to improve your game uh the quickest it's not really the most efficient way time wise um, and again, you have to be careful not to start getting illusions of knowledge of just assuming that you uh, learn something just before because you hear new things, uh, but you know you might not realize that these new things actually don't really matter in the big picture. They don't really improve your uh, your win rate uh, significantly. Um, yeah, so videos are a good way to learn for more novice players to watch and see what the video maker is doing in different spots. But then when you advance, you need to look uh, and find different ways to improve. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Um, for a novice player video, video is good for a novice player in just a way that you can see the thought process of uh, the video maker. That's already a big one, you know, just seeing how people think. That That is um, that's something that is important to learn um, and that can be useful. Then again, you know, a novice player especially is um, much better off if he gets guidance from a coach or from a friend or from a group of friends, you know, people who know what they're talking about, people who who have been through the process of studying themselves, um, you know, they, they can really speed up the process of your improvement uh, big time. Now, we didn't choose to do anything with our Queen Jack, uh, Queen, uh, yeah, Queen Jack there at that stage. I don't think we would get any value from worse hands, and I don't think uh, there's any reason to bluff. Now, we're quite deep. Do we want a 3-bet here? We do. In fact, the whole video, we didn't get a chance to 3-bet nearly as much as I would like to. We were just not getting the hands in the right spots, to be honest, to be able to do that. Now, this board, this is very interesting. There's two ways to go about it. This is actually, I, I like this spot a lot. It's, uh, it's one of those where theoretically you're supposed to check. Um, but betting looks a bit suspicious here, so I, I would want to go for a bet. But why, why are you supposed to check here? And here's going to be a big one for you guys. You know, yes, it's a nice high board, but um, it's a really lockdown board where a straight is out there. Um, and it's a somewhat dynamic board in, in that there's a, there's a flush draw out there. So with stacks being that deep, the player in position, he can actually be very creative on this board, which makes uh, betting with a wide range of hands for out of position player uh, not great. And mind you, of course, it's still great to bet, um, bet my aces there, but what I'm saying is that 
you know, the wide, wide variety of bluffs that I could have in that situation. Uh, I just don't have them enough. So if I'm always betting aces, uh, my my uh, my range is going to be very skewed towards aces because I don't have enough of other hands in that spot. And a good thinking player could really exploit me in that in that situation if I bet all my aces and then basically I don't have enough bluffs. Uh, period. Now, what do we make of this? He made a tiny raise on the flop, and now he's making um, another tiny-ish. But do I think he has ace-4 uh, at this stage? Unlikely. Do I think he has diamonds? Uh, very likely. Um, do I think he's going to keep bluffing with diamonds? Uh, I do. So we just go check, call, check, call, check, call, check, raise on the turn would be... Very interesting indeed, considering that he might have hands that he can call with, you know. Good that we didn't, results oriented, you know, uh, good that we didn't because he would most likely have folded his hand against the check raise, so it worked out well for us. And I, I think in that situation it was the best um, the best line to take. And uh, that being said, his line, I really don't like it. There's no reason for him to make this tiny raise on the flop if he's going to continue in the way he did. Like, if his plan would have been to make the tiny raise and then make a check on the turn and check behind and realize his equity, then it's an interesting idea. Then it's... Um, hmm. Now, do we want to... Do we want to call here? This is this is getting close. We could just stack off just about. I think we're gonna just just for fun. Um, and let's see if we hold. We don't hold. That's fine. He was ahead, but as you could see, you know, with stack sizes being as they were, uh, it was it was very very close. So back to that hand. You know, when he raises the small on the flop. One consideration to do that is make the other player check uh, out of position, that other player in that case being me, and then he could get a free card to see the river for free. But uh, that's not what he did. He made a small raise and then another bet and another bet, and that's uh, it is a bad way to play that specific hand, so that was definitely a mistake on his part. Mm. So, should I focus on making money versus weaker opponents or dominating the concepts of the game versus tougher opponents on Zoom, for example? So, let me first make sure I understand the question correctly. Hmm. Now, we have a chance... Sorry about that, I'm gonna come get back to the question, but um, we have a chance to 4-bet we're deep, which... Which puts us uh, puts us in a, at a slight disadvantage, but we're still gonna four bet. You know, we don't have the most beautiful aces in the world, but um, you know, the player here made a smaller size uh, raise against us. Um, now, what are we gonna do here? The thing is, we're gonna check. We're not really afraid of giving away any free cards. Uh, and we're so deep uh, that we want him to get creative, but we think we, he won't. If he starts betting at this stage, we're most likely behind against, uh, against a uh, straight right now. But um, let's see how this plays out now. Exactly. So he's betting, which is bad news for us. Of course, we're not folding. We have the top set. We have the flush draw. Uh, we're not... Raising that would be that would be silly. We're calling, right? And now at this stage, um, this is getting really really funny because at this stage we could make a tiny bet of let's say 18 18 just to mess with him a bit because once the king rolls off, it's such a it's best it's the best card for us for our range. It's the best card ace. King now uh, is is doing great. Aces are are almost the nuts. You know we have all the sets. We have all the full houses at this stage. So if we ever have a hand that is not a full house, we would be betting it at this stage and bluffing with it. Like if we say had somehow Ace Ten and uh, 
7-6 of hearts, we would be betting it. Mm, that's why I, I decided to bet. Of course, we're betting the river here for value again, uh, hoping that he calls. Most likely he doesn't and he doesn't, but I think we did make some mm, $18 extra profit there by making that tiny bet on the turn, mm, because I don't think he would keep betting his straight uh, on the turn. Uh, or reverse so you know if we let him check he would just have checked behind and that that's not great mm, so yeah should i focus on making money versus weaker opponents or dominating the concepts of the game versus tougher opponents on zoom for example um okay now let's open this hand and um, now listen uh, about this question, right? There's two ways to think about it. I mean, first of all, if you're doing this professionally, like if you're trying to make a living playing poker, then the main consideration is play the best games. Um, maximize your profit by just game selecting. Game selecting is hugely important. So find weaker players, exploit them, make money. Uh, that's the name of the game. Now, the thing is, one way to improve your win rate is to work on your game. One way to work on your game is to play against better opponents and analyze your play afterwards. We're just going to check it down here. Um, and I'm very surprised to see the hand he had. Um, very surprised. But, you know... Something to note. So anyway, back to back to that. Uh, maximize your profit by playing against weaker players. If your goal is to improve playing against better players and analyzing your game afterwards is a good idea. What is a bad idea is playing against good players and not analyzing your play afterwards because that's just waste of time and probably money because you're not really learning anything and um, you're not really making much because your win rate in those games is going to be much smaller. So always consider these these things when you um, choose what to play and where to play at what time. Um, right, and also what makes you feel better, like what whatever makes you happy. You know, some people just love to battle. For them, the money is not the issue for them. It's more about just being the best, proving that they're the best. And if you're one of those people, then, uh, you know, just try to seek out the weaker players. It's not interesting, and so don't. I mean, just do what, what makes you happy. Um, all right, so... I play on non-tracked sites, for example, so no database. I can save individual hands, but that's about it. Well, yeah, that that make, uh, makes your life slightly bit um, slightly bit more difficult. But um, you know, after you finish your session, the biggest hands are still in your mind. The, the, the biggest hands, you still remember them, you can still analyze them, right? So that's a start. Finish your session, go through over the biggest hands. Maybe you can see them in the replay or you don't necessarily need to even save them. Just look them through. And, you know, there's many approaches to how to do it properly. And there's books written about the subject. So I'm not going to get into this discussion now. If, if you guys want me to, uh, let me know. I might do a, a stream specifically on the subject. It is a very interesting subject, right? The, in general, how you learn and how you improve. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily only have to have the database to analyze your play. You know, because I, I analyze my play after my live sessions. I play live. Uh, I come back home or to the hotel or wherever, and uh, I would spend some time thinking about hands, you know, and then I would ask questions to some of my friends about some specific hands. What's your opinion? Uh, what do you think? Uh, you know, and just get different opinions about different situations and, uh, and you know, it's one way to learn. Um, so if, if people can do 
session analysis when they play live you definitely can do it when you play on non-tracked sites because that's basically the same thing except for you it's probably even easier because you can even make notes about the hands that you found interesting right so okay guys just to let you know i'm gonna be um gonna be st stopping in about five minutes i've been playing for quite a while i got the feeling that i was a bit all over the place in terms of um, you know what we're talking about um, so if you have any feedback on that let me know uh, i definitely didn't play my best game uh, nowhere near it because i just talked too much didn't think uh, in some spots, so I think last week's, or not actually the Wednesday's video was a bit more instructive because we did focus on uh, the concepts in-game a bit more than today, but I do still hope that you guys had some takeaways uh, from from the live play today, because um, that, that was the goal anyway. Uh, for me, one of the goals was to see the tendencies of the players to see if we can uh, spot any mistakes, any common leaks. Um, obviously, very hard to judge considering we don't have a HUD, we don't have any stats on any players. Uh, but apart from that, um, yeah, it does seem that, you know, pre flop. Um, well, no, actually, we did face some three bets. I think people maybe three bet a bit too little on average. Uh, in terms of stack sizes, we see some shorter stacks, but mostly people sitting pretty deep, which is obviously something to note whenever you're making a, de a decision uh, of should you play a hand or not. Now, what are we going to do here? We are going to see bet or we are going to check we're gonna see bet like overall this is the board where we are supposed to check a pretty big amount of the time in general with all our range um, i think our specific hand fits nicely into the limited range that we are actually betting both for value and, uh, and as a bluff uh, we do have a limited range that we're betting here on this on this flop. Now we face a call, we face another call. We have quads. Uh, our life is very easy at this point. The only decision is uh, how how much how big a bet is he gonna call? And let's go for two thirds pot size bet and see if he decides to call with his kings here. And he does. And does he have kings? Is the second question. Oh, that's queens. Same thing, same thing. Queens, kings. Uh, what do we think about his play uh, in general here now? Am I gonna... Well, this is slightly annoying. If this player was 100 big lines deep, we would um, immediately call our hand. Now, him being shorter makes it less interesting. We still call uh, just because we want to. No other reason, really. I think this is a very marginal uh, hand to call in this specific situation of been, him being so short, right? If if the stack size was different, then it would be, um, you know, pretty standard. Now, what do I think about this player's um, hand? I think he played it all right. You know, he might uh, want to try to fold his hand at some stage sometimes, but sometimes he definitely needs to call down with queens there. Um, so, yeah. All right, so back to where were we? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did we find out about the player population? Um, we saw some very weird plays post-flop, we saw some pretty weird plays pre-flop, especially I was surprised to see some uh, some questionable plays from small blinds, uh, you know, these are things to note, you know, these are things that should change the way you play uh, your own range, let's say when you are on the in the late position and you know there's a 
weaker player on a small blind who's gonna who's gonna call too much or see too many boards uh, you're in a great position to make some extra money if you are attentive to these sort of things and of course having a hub having the database really helps in that case not having a HUD, you are really, really um, better off by taking a lot of notes, as many notes as you can. Useful notes, though. There's no point of having a, a huge list of things written about each player if uh, there's a lot of useless stuff, right? Just stay, stay to the point. Um, you know, sort through the notes. Sometimes you would still write something that's not important. Whenever you look back at the note on the player, if you see something that shouldn't be there, delete it. Don't don't uh, keep it there because make your life easier whenever you can. Um, okay, that was that was fine. Um, now what else? What else? What else? Um, Nice stream, great stream. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the comments. Really appreciate all of you participating, all the questions uh, and everything. That that was really, really fun. Because in the end, you know, we sort of. I feel that the the playing part, the life play part, was a bit in the background. We're more discussing uh, things that you guys want to hear, uh, and that is cool for me. I hope you like it, and um, yeah, so let me start wrapping up. Um, just a reminder for you who haven't heard uh, a new thing, obviously, so why am I doing this? Uh, love the spot. We started PLO coaching a couple of weeks ago. In fact, I think it was exactly two weeks ago, or was it one week ago? I don't know, time flies. Anyway, let's say two weeks. No, actually, of course, 1st of December, one week ago. Jesus. Just one week ago, we started the new project of um, coaching for profit in PLO. Right? That's why I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm doing these streams. I'm going to do a couple of these um, every week. Or at least that's the plan. The thing is, I'm going to be traveling in December. So next week, tune in on Wednesday. I'm going to do one on Wednesday. After that, there's going to be a bit of time off. I'm going to try to keep in touch with you guys by uh, maybe uh, writing some blog articles that um, you're uh, really welcome to look up. And I might be a guest to somebody else's stream. Like maybe we'll do one one more with MMA Share Dog and discuss uh, some PLO um, whenever we find time to do that. Um, yeah, so reach out to me on Twitter uh, if you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions. Just reach out. I'm uh, I'm uh, open to hearing what you guys have to say. Another exciting thing is we have um, a coaching session, um, which is for free for anyone to join. Uh, that is being held next week. We still have a few slots available. So reach out to us any way you can. You can send a message to support uh, on the Bluff the Spot uh, webpage, or you can reach out to me directly through Twitter or any other way you can find. Probably Twitter is the easiest. So reach out, uh, tell me why you want in, and that's it. You know, that's it. We'll consider you. If you're in, we're going to let you know, and you're you're in for a fun group session that's going to be purely PLO, going to be useful for you guys. Um, yeah, and that's being held next week. You know, for details, of course, I'll contact you personally whenever, whenever uh, we can confirm that you're in. Uh, now, what else would I like to say at this stage? Well, thanks everyone for watching. Um, it's been fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if we made any money. Uh, let's in fact pull it up, uh, just for fun. Let's see uh, what happened in the session. We basically broke even. We won a bit. So, which means... Which means we actually happened to lose a few binds along the way. Um, what do I think about how we played today? Let's analyze the session together. 
uh, I think we didn't play the best game for sure. Several reasons. Uh, we didn't have HUD, so we didn't adapt to any players at all. We were playing in the dark all the time. What can we do about it? Well, if I would be willing to improve my win rate here at this game, I would get a HUD, right? That's very simple to, to fix. Now, the other thing, um, I was talking while playing, and so some of the decisions, for sure, uh, they were not thought through well enough. Now, of course, I'm talking because I'm doing the Twitch stream, but I know a lot of you guys out there, when you're playing, you're still distracted. You might be watching a YouTube video, you might be watching a Twitch stream, you might be doing something that you shouldn't. Do focus on poker when you want to play poker, if you want to win. If, if you're there to have fun, by all means, have fun. Uh, nobody cares what else you do. Just treat it as the same as if you would go bowling or playing billiards. But if you're really serious about your game, do focus on the game. Don't get distracted by doing a million things on the side, even if you think, oh, it doesn't really influence uh, your decisions. Yes, it does. Uh, it definitely does. Uh, there's no way it doesn't. Um, so yeah, that's what I would like to leave you at. You know, if if you want to be professional, focus, work on your game, analyze your sessions after the game, do seek out any material you can get your hands at. Uh, if you really want to progress quickly, um, yeah, do seek out the coach. In my opinion, that's gonna be the the best way for a lot of you guys out there to improve. Another great way is join a group of people. Join a study group, uh, be active in there, work on your game. Um, yeah, anyway, so thank you all. I hope to hear from you um, on Twitter or elsewhere. Um, stay tuned next week, Wednesday, most likely Wednesday. I'll, I'll confirm it uh, still next week, but most likely on Wednesday, around the same time, 7 p.m. Central European time. We're doing another stream. Um, and do apply for the coaching session. You know, you want to know what's the best way to improve? Get a coach. Do you want to get a free coaching session? Just apply. It's very simple. So I'll leave you at that. And uh, thank you all. Um, have a great evening.